Roy's getting ratty, sometimes with rodents, but mostly with David. His excuse, lots of breeding and no sleeping. I said I haven't touched a weapon. I wasn't talking about my weapon, I was talking about a weapon. I am looking at the finest hounds in Ireland, find out what great looks like at the Irish Masters of Foxhounds Association Foxhound Show. Mine come running across to the puppy walker, the girl that walked them with the puppies. That's as far as I got. And Deborah is investigating how Rishi Sunak's government is pushing gamekeepers out of their jobs and alienating the countryside. The GL43 scandal rolls on for another week. There's a good chance we'll have to make our keeper redundant. So the implications of that for him are obvious. We have a competition for you to win an ATN Excite Day Night Vision Scope priced at more than £600. We're talking air guns with James Head from Crackshot. David brings you the news on the new stump of James. Marchington has the best hunting and shooting videos in Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. is torture and yet Roy puts himself through many months of it every year in order to earn a living from breeding racing falcons so they can compete in events like this or this. It does make him a little scratchy, irascible, ratty. You did not even remember my birthday. You did not. No present. Let's just hope our rodent friends are on the receiving end as much as David is this evening. So we are coming towards the end of the breeding season. So we're still full on at the moment, but David has been moaning and bleating, saying that we need to go out and do a film of vats. So we're just going to make sure it's zeroed, um, make sure I'm zeroed as well. So I've not picked up a, a rifle since end of February, not picked up any weapons since the end of February, uh, not had a chance. So um, take it back, oh huh? What? Oh God. <laughs> well, I didn't say anything. I was talking about weapons. And I haven't touched your weapon, but... I said I haven't touched a weapon. I wasn't talking about my weapon, I was talking about a weapon. So Dedication, right? Uh, it is, it is, it is, it is. So yes, time to don the cap, and we shall make sure that we are zeroed and ready to run. No drawings? No drawings today. No, I'm not, I'm not up to drawing, so we're going to go for a little rat-sized or rat-head-sized target. Um, and I think even, well, actually, it's a lot bigger than a rat head. So it's, it's really the size that even David would be able to hit. So we should put that here and then have a go and I see if, I don't come here how far off. off we are. Are you tired? I'm very tired. I am absolutely bloody exhausted. I want to sleep. So yes, going through the breeding season and yeah, sleeping for uh, about four hours a night, broken intermittently for, yeah, as I say, since March, it gets a little bit tedious. Um, which is probably why I'm, like, I'm actually looking a little bit haggard. You know, once I've, once I've slept for a few months, then yeah, it, it, it's not going to come back, is it? <laughs> Roy has shown his shooting skills with many air rifle brands and models, and tonight he has an RTI Arms Priest. Unfortunately, he's lost the magazine, so he'll be hand-loading. The, the little beast that we have to play with tonight is called the Priest 2. So, yeah, and uh, I don't know if it's called the Priest 2 because uh, you could bash things over the head with it, or maybe it is going to be incredibly accurate. So no, I think I've, I have played with it actually, and it has proved to be an incredibly accurate little air rifle. Um, we're just going to check zero now because I've just fiddled around fitting the IR. Um, so we had to we had to take the rails off. There's nothing of it. What you're talking about, my, my svelte figure. No, yeah. the actual rifle. Oh no, the, nothing uh, of it. Well, no, yeah, that's it. It's about the same length as the scope. Um, but yeah, no, it is it is <laughs> it is proper proper dinky. Um, okay. But as I say, it's it is it, this one's in 177 and it is incredibly accurate. Um, it, I'm probably going to prove myself completely wrong now. So as I, I say, I don't think I've done an interview next to a tumble dryer before. Have you not? Would you like me to turn it off? Is it, is it irritating no, it's fine, it's I fine. find it quite soothing. It's quite nice. It drains you out a little bit. Okay, just over to the right a little bit. So we shall just have a play through the menu. It is sub 12 foot pound. Um, but again, you don't need anything over the top for ratties. And there we go. The trajectory on this 
from when I was playing with earlier is incredibly good. Um, pardon? 177. 177, yep. It's alive and it works. With the Infra TD 50L night vision scope on the money, mm. it's time to seek out those rats. That, you certainly got no more attractive. Right, how do we make this thing record? So it's a technophobe, are you finding this alright? Not that much of a technophobe, I can twirl a knob, mate. You can twirl a knob? I can twirl a knob. I can't do much other twirling, but I can twirl a knob. Right. And then we shall get, I've got a little thermal spotter, so hopefully we might be able to pick the little buzz up a little bit quicker and be aware. loads of them back there. But th With the additional, take a deep There's breath, Infrared Eye Series Thermal Monocular E3 the Max the in the hand, no rat is safe. Or is that no cameraman is safe? There it is. Oh, right, it's come to the box, behind the box. Come to order. Many oh, night vision units record sound these days just for ratting induced yeah, yeah. yelps yeah, and screams. Yeah. This is definitely a hot spot, and here's a tree rat without the bushy tail. There it is, going up the bra. Oh, it's on the near the gutter. Wires, yeah, next behind the wires. There it is, there it is on the path. Right in the middle of the path. Finally, Roy has a chance. And we have our first rat. Dead rat. Unfortunately, we shot that just as we were losing light. So what I'm going to do now is just change over the settings. So I'm just recording so you can see. So we're just going to change that from day setting to night setting there. And then I'm going to have a play with the IR. There we go, and then we'll spread the beam a little bit. So, there we go, so that's, that's definitely illuminated our rat a little bit better. So, and that is just absolutely crystal clear there now. The IR helps to give David a fighting chance to get footage through his camera as well. The eyes. You see eyes? Oh, there you are. There we go. Oh, he didn't like that. And he's done. Tricky, right? No, again, another medium wrap. At least we've got one for you and one for me now. We won't go hungry. <laughs> Off to other parts of Roy's aviary complex. One rat has a lucky escape. Spots I glow. It's a mouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now we think this it's is possibly mouse, only the second mouse shot on camera in Field Sports Channel history. Roy feels it's necessary to keep these rodents in check too. There we go. Uh, that was a, a little semi driven mouse. Uh, the mice are, are relatively nice compared to the rats, but. You get too many of them now, a problem. I like to leave the mice as much as we can because obviously we've got a few tawny owls around here, so it's nice to leave them for them. But um, that was in a perfect position and David was looking quite peckish. A few more of those, he could have a kebab. Eventually we return to the busiest part of the yard and Roy has another chance. Are you on that one there, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's a horrible one. That's a big scaly tail. That one's definitely yours. I reckon that'll be a bit tough. I reckon it's an old one. <laughs> I think David might have to get that one mounted. With Roy exhausted after just a few hours, it's time for him to return to his babies. And we hope to get some well-deserved shut-eye. I'm not touching them. You can pick them up if you want. I am not going anywhere near them. But as I say, they are the, what is the one animal that petrifies me. So that was the fourth one, or fourth rat um, that we shot there. 
So we've had a, yeah, a, a bit of a mixed night. So we've had yeah, four rats and a couple of mice. So the, uh, the little priest too was phenomenally accurate, um, cracking little air rifle. And that kitted up with the tube, a TD50L was a superb little bear kit. When I started shooting with air rifles, then it was obviously iron sights. Um, and then we, we had little smarty tubes. The kit that we had tonight is, it's not cheap, but it's certainly not at the, the high end of the budget, but it just works absolutely flawlessly. For more information about the Infrared Thermal and Night Vision units, go to infrarayuk.co.uk. Thank you, Roy. And there is more about air guns later in the show from James Head of Crackshot. Now, this week's prize draw is for an ATN Excite rifle scope priced at more than £600, thanks to ATN for donating the scope. And if you would prefer to buy it than win it, there's a link to its website below. If you want to win it, easiest way to enter the competition is to join the Field Sports Nation and watch their special Tuesday night show, Field Sports Extra, link to that below too. Next, lives under a hen house, little twitchy nose and spreads disease. Yes, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Basque says a new consultation on firearms licensing is the most important in 35 years. The Minister for Crime and Policing, Chris Philp, launched an eight-week consultation on the 29th of June 2023. Basque is urging shooters to respond. It welcomes many of the proposals announced by the Minister, including mandatory involvement of GPs and the review of the length of a certificate. It welcomes the Minister's rejection of putting shotguns on firearms certificates. However, it has concerns about several other areas of the consultation. It's a suggestion that the people are given more powers to come into people's houses without warrant and, and firearms. I don't know I don't full detail of the implications for that, but that, my instinct is that that's got to be wrong in a wrong democracy where somebody's civil liberties to potentially threat simply because they've elected to possess firearms. Also, also somewhat perturbed to see the suggestion again that there should be a special hotline for people to tune in with concern about certificate holders. If that's not an invitation for abuse, abuse then I really don't know what is. DEFRA has approved funding for the English Blue Fin Tuna Research Programme. A green light for the chart 2023 scheme means sport fishing can restart in Cornwall on 25 vessels. Wales and Northern Ireland already have their chart programmes approved for 2023. A total of 40 charter vessels are authorised to fish for Atlantic bluefin tuna across the UK's western waters. Of course, it's not just chart skippers that benefit from chart going ahead. Um, down the southwest, we've got many businesses like pubs, restaurants, um, B and B's, hotels, all now going to benefit from the anglers that are going to go to Cornwall and Devon to fish on our boats. MPs say a chief superintendent should be stripped of his role as the national police lead on policing trail hunting. Chief Superintendent Matt Longman, the National Police Council lead on hunting, gave a keynote speech at the launch of a campaign to ban trail hunting and claimed that the current law is not working. Charities, including the RSPCA and the League Against Cruel Sports, back the campaign, called Time for Change. During the launch, Chief Superintendent Longman, who is also commander of Plymouth Police, said that trail hunting is a smokescreen for fox hunting and blames the current law for a low numbers of prosecutions. MPs Greg Smith and James Gray condemn his intervention. They say he must be removed from his role as the most senior officer in charge of hunting after making biased statements. Lord Zach Goldsmith has resigned. He quit after refusing to apologise for criticising a Commons investigation into Boris Johnson. The Tory peer stepped down as a minister and used his resignation to attack Prime Minister Rishi Sunak for apathy on climate change. While a minister at DEFRA, Goldsmith backed a number of then Prime Minister Boris Johnson's animal rights policies. Basque is highlighting potential infringements of human rights. In evidence to the Scottish Parliament's Rural Affairs and Islands Committee, Basque's Head of Environmental Law and Evidence, Dr Marnie Lovejoy, described the Wildlife Management and Muirburn Scotland Bill as bad law because estates can lose licences on the mere suspicion of illegal activity, not convictions. 
As a result, the bill infringes the European Convention of Human Rights. She says the politicisation of grouse shooting will lead to further attempts to have licences suspended through snare and trap tampering. The licence can be potentially suspended for an unlimited amount of time based on no wrongdoing whatsoever, simply based on a phone call to the police which triggers an official investigation. I've no doubt in my mind that this would be considered disproportionate. And I've no doubt in my mind that this will lead to court cases. MP Sir Bill Wiggin has attacked the proposal to ban the importing of hunting trophies into Britain as racist. The private member's bill by Henry Smith MP cleared its first hurdle in the House of Lords. The hunting trophies import prohibition bill may fail as it has limited parliamentary time. Amendments approved by the Lords could kill it. The North Herefordshire MP says it is wrong for communities that rely on hunting to be told how to run their countries by British politicians. Meanwhile, a delegation from southern African countries came to London to speak up for hunting as part of conservation and their efforts to look after their wildlife. Botswana ranks number one in Yale University's Species Protection Index, with the UK 125th. So hunting is key for us. We will always do hunting as long as we can see that the resource still, still allows us to do it. Scottish gamekeepers want the government to recognise predator control as essential conservation work. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association has started a petition which is calling on the control of predators such as foxes and crows to be legally recognised as conservation. It says the work benefits the survival of endangered species of ground nesting birds such as lapwings and curlews. Two shooters have won silver medals for Team GB in the European Games in Poland. Lucy Hall and Matt Coward Holly took the second spot in the trap mixed team in Krakow. In qualification, they got a score of 144 out of a possible 150. A shootout decided that Italy would go up against them in the gold medal match. After a tightly fought final, with the lead switching back and forward between the teams, the Italians came out on top with a final score of 6-4 against the British pair. Children have been enjoying learning about nature on moors across northern England. Around 3,000 youngsters took part in the Let's Learn More events at eight locations. It's English Upland's largest annual education event. It provides an opportunity for children to meet the people and organisations that help to protect the moorland landscapes and species. BASC, the North York Moors Moorland Organisation, Gamekeepers and more than 50 partner organisations create a range of activities. Hopefully we have a fantastic week. It went from Nidderdale to the Dales to uh, Northern Pennines to Lancashire to the Peak District different venues, kids enjoying themselves, games was a centre of the attention, but making sure we work with those other partners as well. We want the kids to come out because the fresh air is very important to them. We also need them to understand that this managed landscape does have to have some do's and don'ts, some simple rules that we expect them to follow. And finally, an angler has hooked one of the largest freshwater fish ever caught in the UK. Dan Wadey landed a colossal catfish weighing 127 pounds. He caught it using a dead bait during a catfish conservation group fishing at Chigborough Fisheries in Essex. He says he had a slow run and lifted into a dead weight, which then headed at speed for sanctuary behind an island. But with extra pressure, he turned the fish and it headed towards the bank. Dan says it was the fish of dreams and will be subject of many beer fueled conversations. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Am I too cruel about David? If that's what you think, please register your disapproval by clicking like below this film. Now, Field Sports Live in Leicestershire is next week. It's in the Wycliffe Rooms in Lutterworth on the evening of Friday the 14th of July 2023. It's our 90-minute live show with licensed bar and local gun shop Giles Marriott. Sign-up link is below. It's £10 a ticket, which you get back if you join the Field Sports Nation on the night. Next, a word from Sacco.
No, hounds and Ireland. What a wonderful mixture. Who says fox hunting isn't competitive? Here at Stradbally Hall in Ireland, packs from the north of the north to the south of the south have come to show off their best hounds. It's the IMFHA Foxhound Show 2023. Declan Feeney, Huntsman of the East Down, is in for the unentered dog foxhound class. These are the teenagers of the foxhound game. Well, they're supposed to show themselves and stand up and chase a biscuit and be more mature than mine were. <laughs> but unentered hounds can be like that sometimes. They can do great things for you at home. And then when you go out and they like a hair, they just lie down. <laughs> Mine come running across to the puppy walker, the girl that walked them when they were puppies. <laughs> That's as far as I got. <laughs> He's not having as much of a hard time of it as some. We don't have as many sh hound shows in the Republic of Ireland as they do in the UK. So this is a very important day for us because it gives our hunts, and particularly our hunt staff, the opportunity to display the quality of their hounds. I think it brings everybody together um, before the next season and it lets everybody look at each other's hounds and um, we've seen some fantastic hounds today. All the hunt, hunt staff, you know, they take great pride in doing their work and they, they produce the hounds fantastically. The, the test of any hound is in the hunting field. That's the ultimate test. What happens here today, okay, you will see good hounds, good confirmation, but the talking is done in the hunting field. They're looking for a happy, healthy, bit of drive up and down the ring and, and very energetic. The standard has improved in the last 10 years in Ireland. It's really, really up to its game. The show committee have upped their game. The ring, as you see, and the crowd around the place, it's brilliant, it's great atmosphere. And we just need a party on the Saturday night before and we'll grand then. In the end, the cup for unentered dog hound goes to the Louth. So, who's in with a chance for the big prize? The Open Dog Hound Championship, the Mrs Hall Perpetual Challenge Cup for the best dog hound exhibited in any class. My tip would be for the uh, South Tyrone, the Meath or the Kilkenny. And really I listen to the huntsmen because the huntsmen are the professionals and they are living this and breathing this day in, day out, and they're on the grapevine. So that's where I take my cues from, as well as what I see on the day. The honour of the class has just been done. The Lowe's done fiercely well. They had a fantastic couple, and within that couple there was an outstanding unentered dog who showed and galloped. Sadly, unentered is very difficult. Sometimes when there's a lot of congestion in the ring, they, don't, they, they feel a bit threatened and shy and then feel a bit timid and they don't gallop or express themselves and then they come back and stand them in the lead and it's, they sort of just cave in. But in fairness, the judges got it 100% right. Dog Championship, please God ourselves. This could be very difficult. It, the, the judges have now identified what type of hound they're going for and they're going for a sporty looking old English hound which they've firmly identified with the judging so far. So now they're looking like probably hot favourites but you just don't know. You just don't know. I've won the unentered dog, old English, and I've won the un unentered two couple, or couple, sir. It's your day? Well, so far. I'm old English and then we're going in against the modern which is a harder class to try and win because they're a bigger hound compared to the old English so it's hard, just hard to know what way the judge is going to sway. So. If you had £20 in your pocket to put on it, who would it go on? Probably the South Tyrone. The two main kinds of foxhound here are the modern and the old English. Well the modern English foxhound tend to be narrower. You have the same spring of rib. So in England, you see, you're going to maybe have more open fields, bigger fields. You've got the speedier hound, and you're maybe a hundred horses riding after you. So you need a hound that can gallop and go. The heavier hound tend to be just that bit slower, possibly. But at the end of the day, they're only as fast as their nose. Because I hunt old English, you modern, hunt modern. modern so we so can that. fight amongst each other. <laughs> These two judges are in the Harrier's ring. There's a ring for beagles too, and the crowd has brought its own mixed bag of puppies and cur dogs, including these remarkable looking animals. So these are not obviously foxhounds? No, these are Af African hunting hounds, otherwise known as Azawaks. Uh, probably 15 or so of them in Ireland, and similar to maybe up in 30 in the UK possibly. 
they would have been originally bred to hunt gazelle and like whatever is in in the desert that wouldn't have too much but these particular ones were then used as a guardian breed with the Touareg tribe so they have very high guard instinct and are very wary of strangers and that uh, island does lack desert yeah, yeah, it does. It does. A lot of people in Europe would would course them now, and there's you know course and competitions for them, which you know we don't have the opportunity to do over here. But the hope is to bring them to Europe at some stage and do that. Back to the business in hand, and we are reaching the dog hound final. The foxhound judges, who are all from England, are so far favouring the old English, which is good news for the Louth, bad news for the Meath and the South Tyrone. How will the championship go? The dog of the dog hound championship. South Tyrone, Harold. Out of more than a hundred hounds judged, it is Harold from South Tyrone that is Ireland's top dog hound for 2023. Ryan is ecstatic. I did predict the lows, but I always did have an inkling. But we did it, and thank God. You did it. Difficult Good. morning, but fantastic morning for the lows hounds. <laughs> we didn't rob the meat. Get on. <laughs> Uh, we didn't rob the meat. The lows were had an outstanding morning and, and rightfully deserved because the huntsman Lloyd has a tremendous amount of work done, as do all the other huntsmen, to bring hounds here, to get them into that ring, to show the way they did and the condition they look. It's credit to the kennels, our country and the hunt staff and our masters and members and we just it's just great to have a win. What is it about confirmation of yours that particularly won it? I, I, that dog beautifully balanced. He's a beautifully balanced dog. He's not that happy about showing. I had him showing last year as an non-ender dog and he didn't like it too much, but I didn't sicken him. So I teased him back in this year with his brother Harper. His brother Harper was on their champion last year, but now he's champion. And right, he's a great balance. He's a great front, lovely shoulder, and a sweeping top line. I told you the South Throne would win. <laughs> the IMFHA holds this show every year. Click the website link below to find out more. Thanks all who took part in that, and to Gary McCartney from Countryside Alliance, Ireland, for asking me to go. And the Big English Show takes place on Wednesday the 19th of July 2023 in its last year at the Peterborough Showground. There's a link to the Festival of Hunting below. We can make films like that one thanks to the Field Sports Nation who pay for our news coverage of the little sports, the ferretings, the falconries and the fox huntings that do not get much coverage in a public space like YouTube. If you'd like to join them, Jack Pike has sent us another 50 rucksacks for a new membership push in July. You pay £50 for the membership, £4.99 for the postage, and we send you a canvas bag plus goodies such as Gunlock and Field Sports Channel Beanie, totaling £45 worth of kit. What a bargain. Link below. Next up, the Westminster government is putting gamekeepers' jobs on the line. There should be birds here ready for the shooting season. But this shoot on Salisbury Plain is in limbo because of the chaos surrounding general licences. DEFRA announced a last-minute change, which means shoots near some protected sites need a licence to release birds. Basque says the new rules affect hundreds of shoots. Basque Chief Executive Ian Bell says his shoot, which has been operating on Salisbury Plain for more than 100 years, could close if it doesn't get a licence. There's a good chance we'll have to make our keeper redundant. So the implications of that for him are obvious, anyone losing their job. For us, it's a whole raft of money down the drain. We've been here for nearly 100 years and we've done an awful lot of work to try and make this place as beautiful as it currently is. And we're part of the whole military infrastructure here. This is here is a military training area but we get licence in order to shoot and to do our conservation work. So that will take an impact. MP Greg Smith says the government needs to take urgent action to tackle the crisis. It's a real mess uh, and we need to get it sorted rapidly because actually, if nothing else, we about the animal welfare of all of those birds. If they can't be released, they're alive, they exist. What on earth is going to happen to all of those birds if they can't be released and then shot to get them into the food chain for people to eat that delicious game meat. You know, the government clearly were thinking about this at the start of the year. It wasn't until a couple of weeks ago that any indication of any change whatsoever started to come uh, through to, to shoots around the country. 
DEFRA claims the risk of bird flu is the reason for the 11th hour change, which is endangering hundreds of shoots and thousands of jobs. But gamekeepers say the data the decision was based on is outdated as it's from last year. They just seem to be using that as an excuse, I think. Uh, there's been no documented case where game birds have brought in even influenza onto an estate or on an, onto any ground. There's been documented cases of, of pheasants and partridges catching it. There's just one thing after another. It just seems like it's, it's just another attack on shooting. Only a handful of shoots out of hundreds of applications have been granted a licence so far. Even those that have say the licence restricts them from releasing birds until September. Basque is going to fight these decisions. Basque and other field sports groups have joined forces to seek a judicial review over DEFRA's failure to issue the GL43 general licence because it puts hundreds of gamekeepers' jobs at risk. Rather sadly, the keeper for a neighbouring shoot, they got the news either the beginning of this week or the end of last week that they were not going to get an individual licence. That chap broke down because of the amount of effort and work that he's put into this on the back of a COVID season and a season last year where we hardly had any birds um, because of the impact of AI. Uh, and we, do, we believe this is the precautionary principle being overly applied uh, and not particularly well thought through. Norfolk gamekeeper Stephen Musk is one of hundreds still waiting. He says if his licence doesn't arrive in time, his chute may fold, he could lose his job and his whole family will suffer too. Obviously family, it would be up, upheaval, moving, moving house and, and possibly moving complete communities. So that's obviously a big issue. The, the local community, we do employ several people, the beaters, everyone that's a, it's a little community in itself out in the countryside, it gets people out and you know that would be lost as well. Field sports groups warn if shoots go, the countryside will change forever as the vital conservation work gamekeepers do will go to. What a ridiculous situation, so easily solved by the Westminster government admitting that it made a mistake. Apparently political pride is more important than gamekeepers' jobs. Next, crack shot on air guns. Does each air gun like a different pellet? James Head takes a selection of pellets from the crack shot shop up to the crack shot range, which handily is on the first floor of the crack shot shop. He tries them out in a day state huntsman to see if there are any that are extra good or extra bad. So this was the first pellets we used, which was the uh, JSP Exacts. So what we zeroed with to just give us a bit of a base. And then we just tested the pellets without zeroing the others, just to look at the group size. So the next ones was the Barracuda Max, which was the top right. We had a little bit more windage drift on this top right one here with the Barracudas. The sort of at 20 metres, which we're shooting at the moment, that would be fairly acceptable. The middle group, we then shot the JSB Exact Heavies, which again is very similar to the very first group with normal JSBs. Next groups was the QAS Domed. 956 weight so this was on this bottom left group so again it wasn't horrendous and i again i'd be fairly happy to use those there was a little flyer that could well have been me and last of all was the air arms diablo field um, which again we did have a flyer most of the group was okay but generally what we have found here is that most of those pellets are going to work well but if i had to pick one i'd probably stick with the standard GSB for the top, top group. For more about Crackshot, the Devon-based and online air gun shop, go to crackshot.uk. Thanks, James. Now from politics to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Martington, it's Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up this week, here's one that surprised me. I never knew civilians could legally own and fire full auto machine guns in the UK, but that's exactly what this group of Vickers enthusiasts are doing. The video explains how it's legal. Last week, I was out filming David from Predator Protection UK, shooting squirrels from his hide in the woods. Little did I know he was planning to turn the tables and film me filming him. This video is the result. Next, Rob Speed makes a last-minute decision to get out and deal with some troublesome corvids. The breeze keeps the birds moving, and with a hush power 410, they keep coming until the bag breaks the 100 mark. With the world sporting underway at EJ Churchill this week, here's a fascinating series of shot cam clips recorded by top shot Ed Solomons, showing the line and lead he uses on a variety of challenging sporting clays. There's no commentary, but the shooting speaks for itself. There are some really good, affordable day-night optics available now, but which one is the best? To help you make up your mind, here's our old friend and Mark Ripley summing up the pros and cons of the Pulsar C50, Hick Micro Alpex, and infrared TD50L. Here's a Spanish hunter and conservationist who's already made up her mind. Marta uses ATN's 4K binoculars and Excite Pro Scope to take out an old mouflon as part of the estate's cull plan. Stefan from Norma Ammunition explains what makes an effective hunting bullet, then puts the company's tip strike to the test in a spectacular driven hunt in Spain. And finally this week, here's British shooting journalist Chris Parkin putting together a budget 2-2 rimfire rig for a long-range shooting challenge, battling wind and elevation at up to 310 meters. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, it's at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.